Happy New Year. This is Irene with a special New Year's message. At the age of 35, I lost a breast to cancer. Currently, I have fibroids, and I don't know if I'm capable of having a child. I have no children. I'm not married. I'm not in love with anyone. I'm not digging any guys right now. And um, my wallet is pretty empty. But now at the age of 38, I am the happiest I've ever been in my life. And that's because of the love of the Lord. That's because he put me through all these challenges so that I can realize, and this is my opinion, <laughs> he put me through all these challenges so that I could realize how precious and important life is and how worth it, it that I am that he allowed me to continue to be here because so many challenges, I didn't have to make it this far to be 38. So in this new year, I just want you guys to see how blessed you are and don't attach your self-worth to your position in life, your job, who loves you, who wants you, um, how many kids you have, um, if you're married or not. Attach your self-worth to your creator. He didn't put you here for no reason at all. He put you here for a reason. Live that reason. Live that purpose. And even if things aren't great right now the way you want them to be, know that God wants you to be happy. He wants you to live in your joy no matter what's going on around you. He wants you to live for joy. That's one of your purposes in life. So where, while you're trying to get to where you're trying to get, he wants you to be happy. And he wants you to have joy and life and love within yourself. And don't depend it upon anything else around you, but just depend it on him. And have the most awesome year of your life. And know that you are here. And because you are here, you are blessed. Everybody didn't make it to the new year. So know that you are blessed and enjoy every moment of the life that God gave you. Hey, this is just a little bonus material from CBiz Media's The Mix podcast. So thanks for joining us. And it's a little bonus material from our um, episode, Reading is Fundamental. If you didn't see the, or hear the podcast, because it's audio, guys, go to cbiztvonline.com. All right, guys, this is bonus material from our podcast. And I'm going to continue with another book, audio book called Respect the Life of Aretha Franklin by David Ritz, published in 2014. And I got to say love to the late great Aretha Franklin. She's a Detroit girl. I'm a Detroit girl, so I have to show her love. And I also have to let you guys know that she was not really fond of this book. This is an audio book that I listened to part of it. I did not listen to the full book, so I don't have the full 100% story. But I invite you guys to go listen and make your own assumptions and, and assertions about this book because it was written by another party and it was not exactly approved by Miss Aretha. The book did have some naughty bits about her and her life and her circle and some of the people that she was around. Again, listen on your own and make your own um, assumptions or assertions about her life. But nobody knows but her, you know, exactly what went down. So I'll let's just keep that in mind. But I'm just going to quickly just get into what I took away from the book. I'm not going to get into any details about Miss Aretha and her life or anything like that. And no hate always about love. So we're not going to get too deep into that. But I'll just share something that I found out through the book because this author talked to people that was in her circle and she grew up in the church and the gospel world, but um, seeing how famous her father was 
for some reason the gospel and the soul and R&B music mingled together. So there were a lot of artists that they worked with, as, especially as she was trying to trying to cross over. But even before that, because a lot of the gospel artists, it looks like they were trying to cross over and get into mainstream music. So she intermingled and connected with some of those people as well. And so someone in her circle or someone that was around during that time in that music scene shared something about the behaviors of some of the artists. And we all know in the music world that we've all heard the stories of how it gets really sexual and there's a lot of sexual activity surrounded by especially these major big artists where they have a lot of fans and people willing to do a lot of things. So that's no secret. Um, But I was surprised to see that this was also going on in the gospel world, that some of the gospel artists were getting in on this as well. And this particular person was not a gospel artist. They were, um, I'll say they worked more in the secular field or mainstream music. But they shared that some of the people in the gospel world were a little bit more freaky and a little bit more, more ready to do different things and try things with the same sex. So I was surprised and shocked to hear that from this uh, particular person. But I shouldn't, I'm not that surprised because we all know that certain things go on in the music industry, but in the gospel industry, I was somewhat surprised to, to hear that information and to hear what really goes on. And I feel like it was somewhat telling about people in the gospel world because, you know, I'm a Christian and I, I represent that. And I just didn't like the fact that us as Christians are representing one thing and living another thing and being two-faced, so to speak. Now, I'm not talking about any particular person or people in this book was talking about people back, probably back in the 60s or that time. So, you know, I'm not trying to indict anybody or indict all the Christians or the whole gospel world or all of gospel music, but it's just very telling that maybe we still have some work to do, those people of faith, in representing God and really being what we say we are really about. And that's just for anybody, I feel. We have to be 100 with who we really are and show respect of of who we are and don't be two-faced. Don't try to trick people and be one way and then do something else and not really represent who you really are supposed to be representing. So that's something that I took away from that book. My neck choking out my lungs Finally got a rap I was crying, sucking on my thumb Ever since my birth Guess I learned how to overcome Single parent home But never lived in the slums Always had a hot meal Never had to chase crumbs Pocket full of loose change And a piece of bubble gum Clothes on my back Even though it wasn't what I wanted If life is a marathon Why is it moving so fast? We all sitting in coach Trying to get the first class Bunch of rose petals Broken pieces of a romance 
side, stepping through this life, something like a slow dance. <laughs> Walking through the valley, got a whole hands. Yeah. With my destiny, not my own plans. Still young, but one day I'll be an old man. And when I'm gone, maybe then you can understand. <laughs> Wisdom ain't automatic, but it's real necessary yeah. Knowledge is important, but it is only secondary Wisdom's not applied, then our knowledge becomes contrary For real. This is hip-hop beyond 30 yeah. Had to switch it up again, like LeBron's jersey <laughs> Overcoming my mistakes, now I'm God-worthy yeah. And the writing's on the wall, so I'm not guilty yeah. Much effort, still aiming for perfection Don't cry when I'm gone, try to keep it in perspective My whole life is one big reflection All of my success in my failures and my questions yeah. And music is the canvas where I'm leaving my impression But I painted with the blood and the tears of my confessions yeah. Feeling so much pressure, Halloween ain't nothing special I am just a broken man with an unbroken message No, no No, 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 wait, no, 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 wait, no, 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 wait, no, 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 no. In this video, I'm gonna give you three ways that you can prepare for the calling that God has on your life. And to do that, we're gonna study 1 Samuel chapter 16. You might wanna pause this video and just read that chapter to kinda of get the context. But really, it's a passage early in the life of King David. This is before he became king. So as we study this passage, we're going to focus on how God prepared David for the future callings that he had for him. Number one comes from 1 Samuel 16 verses 1 through 7. And if you want to prepare for your calling, you have to focus on your heart first and foremost. So when we start thinking about our calling and, and uh, how we can prepare for it, a lot of words like training, instruction, schooling, maybe seminary, or all these types of words might come up in your mind to help you prepare for the calling that God might have for you. We like to think about the practical skills that we'll need. If we're gonna be a preacher, how can you talk and, and speak in, a, in an eloquent way? Or how can you dissect the Bible passage in the right way? Or maybe you wanna be a part of the worship band and you wanna work on your vocals and you wanna, whatever your calling is, maybe you wanna do something in the medical field or whatever you wanna do in the future, we often think about the practical, instructional, tips and techniques but whenever god prepares someone for a calling he always starts with the heart our heart is ultimately the most important variable and how effective will be for god it says this in first samuel chapter 16 verses 6 through 7 this is when samuel was going to jesse's house and god told him to go anoint one of jesse's sons and it says when they arrived samuel took one look at Eliab and thought surely this is the lord's anointed but the lord said to samuel don't judge by his appearance or height for i have rejected him the lord doesn't see things the way you see them 
People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So we can have all of the, the external worldly skills. The oldest son of Jesse, he just looked like he was going to be the king. But God said, you judge on the outside, I judge on the inside. And so he said, David is the one who has the heart that I'm looking for. So you can have all the leadership skills, you can have the best voice, you can have the best speaking skills, whatever it is that you're interested in. You can have all the the, the worldly, earthly skill sets and all the talent in the world. But if you don't have a heart devoted to God and humble before God, then it's not going to pan out the way that you want. So number one, the first thing you got to do if you want to prepare for the future calling that God has on your life is to commit your heart fully to God. The second thing you have to do if you want to prepare your heart for a future calling is to receive God's anointing on your life. Whenever you go through the Bible, you see that ultimately people who did great things for God were not great people. They were people who God had anointed with his spirit. In the New Testament, we all receive the spirit of God when we put our faith in Jesus Christ. If you repent of your sin and you um, put your faith in Jesus Christ and depend on God's grace, the Bible says that we're all baptized into one spirit. So you receive the spirit it in, in Christ when you become a Christian. However, throughout our life, we have to consistently be filled with the Spirit. You might have the Spirit, you might be baptized in the Spirit, but if you're not consistently filled with the Spirit, meaning you're you're in tune with the Spirit, as Galatians 5 says, you're walking in step with the Spirit, then you're not going to be as effective as you can be. What I love about 1 Samuel chapter 16 is that this is the one of the first things we learn about, about David and he's anointed before he does all the great things. This passage becomes comes before he killed Goliath, before he did the military victories, before he became the king. He was anointed and then he did all these great things. So again, you don't get the anointing by being a great person. Rather, when you receive God's anointing, meaning the Holy Spirit, and you and you learn to walk in step with the Spirit, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ and you spend your life learning to walk in the Spirit, then you're going to be effective for God. Here's what it says in 1 Samuel 16, verse 13. It says, So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. And finally, the third way that you can prepare for your calling is by accepting the service opportunities in your present. If you want to prepare for your future calling, you have to be faithful to the calling that God has given you right now. Calling is a big topic, and I have some other videos on this topic that I can link to in the description below. Ultimately, Christians have one calling, which is to glorify God. That's our ultimate calling. But throughout our life, we'll have individual specific callings that could change and will be adapted, you know? So maybe sometime uh, someone will be called to be a pastor. And then a season of life comes and God calls them out of the pastorate and calls them to do some other mission, uh, missions work or other ministry work that's not specifically being a pastor. So that person's calling has changed at that point. So a calling calling in one sense can change throughout your life. It's, it, our ultimate calling is the same, but individually it can change when God leads it. So big picture, if you want to prepare for your future calling, you have to be faithful to the calling that God has put on you right now. I love 1 Samuel 16 because it's so beautiful what happens. David comes out of the field tending the sheep, gets anointed, by Samuel and says, you're the, you're going to be the king. You're anointed to be the king. And then God sends them back out into the field to tend the sheep. You know, he doesn't go from the, sh the, the fields tending sheep to the, to the throne of Israel. He doesn't just go right there. 
He gets anointed and then God has a series of steps and faithful lessons that he teaches David throughout service that prepare David for the future calling of being king. He went out into the field and tended the sheep again. He went out and, and delivered food to his brothers who were at war. He, he went out and then he fought Goliath as a young man. Then he became the commander of armies. Then he, then he became the, the king of Judah. Then he became the king of all of Israel. So it wasn't just this one boom, boom, step all out into, uh, you know, getting anointed to being king. So many times, you know, we want to go from, uh, a, a, from zero to being a hero, right from, from one step to the next, but that's not how it happens. So you don't go from sweeping floors to being the CEO. It just doesn't happen that way. You got to go from sweeping floors to working in the, uh, one department or working your way up, working your way up. And maybe 20 years down the line, maybe God calls you to be the CEO. You don't go from the pew to the pulpit in once where you know swell swoop where boom i got the anointing and now i'm now i'm gonna start a church and lead a ministry and you know save the masses like you got to go through the steps you got to get the training you got to be faithful in the little things long story short if god's called you to sweep the floors today you got to be the best floor sweeper ever. If God's called you to lead children's ministry today and you'd rather be leading a, a church, a mega church or something, you got to be faithful to serve the kids God's put right in front of you right now. Whatever God's called you to do in this season of life, he's using that to prepare you for the future seasons ahead. If we always say no to the service opportunities that God presents us right now in our present, we're going to miss out on the training that we need so that we can fulfill the calling in our futures. And this is exactly what happened to, to David. If you read through Psalms, or I'm sorry, uh, 1 Samuel 16, what's really interesting is that, again, he gets anointed, but then Saul is looking for a heart player. Saul's going through all kinds of stuff and he's he's having all kinds of bad moments and they suggest, hey, why don't you get someone to play the harp for you? And David just so happens to be able to play the harp really well. So they recruit David to serve the king, serve Saul as a harp player. And, and rather than David saying, no, like I was anointed to be king, he, you know, he doesn't do that. He accepts the service opportunity that God gives him. And that one step of getting into service to the king was actually the first step that led to many other steps that ultimately led to David being the king of Israel one day. So it says in 1 Samuel 16, verse 21, it says, So David went to Saul and began serving him. Saul loved David very much, and David became his armor bearer. David was anointed be, to be king, but he didn't just go right to the throne. He had many years and many steps to take. And he, he took that first humble step and said, you know what? The king who is king right now is asking me to serve. And even though I've been anointed to be king, I'm going to go serve and be faithful in the ministry that God's called me to right now. So big picture, say yes to the service opportunities God has for you. You know, be faithful in the ministry that God has opened up to you right now, even if that's not the ministry you hope to do one day. God's training you through the small steps. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to tap the subscribe button so every time I make a new video, you don't miss out. You might even want to hit that little bell next to the subscribe button so you get a little notification every time I make a new video. Thanks for watching and God bless. If you are a Christian single person who wants to be married one day, you might really want to consider enrolling in AGW University. I'm currently offering three in-depth courses that will give you really incredible biblical and practical tips that will help you receive the blessing of a Christian relationship if that's
Side.